You know, a famous man who is now in big trouble once said, the sun don't shine forever, but as long as it's here, we, then we might as well shine together. So here we are. This is not the Option Podcast, though it is. This isn't Sports Debate Tuesday, though it, it is also that. It is a fly solo episode to dedicate my love to sports, particularly in the set of volleyball. So I am going to do something called Olympic Review and MBO, Manhattan Beach Open Preview. So let's start uh, from present to past. We, I was thinking about doing the Olympics first, but I think since the NBA is around the corner and I will not be at the Manhattan Beach Open, um, let's, let's start with that. I will be in England, and unfortunately I will be missing some of you guys, though I will stick my head in the qualifier just to see what's going on. So let's take a look as I go to camera two at the field where I think you and I can have a little fun picking winners. So let's zoom in, right? We see Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss at the top of the of the field, but this is the Manhattan Beach Open, and until they actually win one, I, I say respectfully, you have no powers here, Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> uh, you know I'm kidding, Chris, and you know the love I have for you guys is profound, but of course, a lot, um, half kidding because you still have something to prove here. So if I were to pick a winner, um, and a team to look out for in the main draw. I I would say Hughes and Chang versus Clotha and Nuss, and I say Hughes and Chang um, in a very, very close three. Do look out for Kleiman and, and Ross. They have been playing, and they I've seen some of the scrimmages, and they can beat anyone on any given Sunday. So they make it to Sunday. Look out, shout out. Let's not sleep on Betsy Flint. Right now she's the reigning defending champ with Julia Scholes, and though she lost her first round match to the 32 seed, she climbed all the way back, which is a testament to it's not how you fall, it's how you get back up, and that is that is getting back up the long way, all the way from the contenders bracket all the way to the finals and then and then um eventually winning and congratulations to betsy and she has a chance with the same partner to defend her title so those are the top few i'll scroll down a list of people who are in the draw there's gino there's tony there's brooke there's megan there's abby there's savvy there's Jaden. there's pater and wood ashley pater and sarah wood actually made the semi the finals for Denver, the Denver Open. That's how they got in this this tournament. It's an automatic bid. Let me, just, as well as Miskowski and Perry Brennan. So that's what's going on for the women. Now let's take a look at the men. Top seed, you got Theo Brunner. You have Trevor Crab. And of course, you have Taylor and Taylor, Miles Partain, Banesh is back, America's hitman for hire, Cody Caldwell and Sean Cook. I see them as the fourth seed. Budinger Evans back from the games as well. And and Phil sticking with Avery Dross. I really like that too. Logan Smith. It's Logan, sorry, Logan Weber and Hagen Smith. They made the semifinals last year. I, I believe all the way from the winner's bracket. Some of the, some of the best work I've seen from, from both of them collectively, and Hagen in particular, probably in his career, even though they did make the semis for uh, Chicago, which is kind of like the ultimate neutral ground for the domestic scene. So, so if I were to pick a winner for the men, I would actually go Taylor and Taylor over my favorite team, um, pretty much the last – since they've, as individuals and as a team, Trevor Crabbe and Theo, I got them second. Um, I do, I'm very, very interested in Chase Budinger and Miles Evans and seeing, I really hope I get to see a rematch of them playing the Taylors like last year. That was my match of the year. Um, it's also on YouTube and it was absolutely gnarly. The, the serves, the power blocking, the, you know, a little stare, a, a little drama staring across the net. Sunset game, ESPN left. We stuck around. It was one of the best sun, one of the best, it was my match of the year, but it was certainly sunset, sunset match of the year. Um, everybody, you feel different, please leave it in the comment section. I'll definitely give it its attention. If you had a match of the year, 2023, let me know. Make sure you also smash the like button on my YouTube thing. It helps with the algorithm a little bit. And those are my picks. Now let's talk. Let's have a little bit, a little bit of fun. Let's let's talk about the qualifier. Let's talk about the teams that 
can not only make the main draw, but if they make the main draw, probably have a dent. But let's have a little fun. I'm going to go dark horse pick for the men. Now, my dark horse pick is Miles Mukutatia and Matt Hilling. Miles is someone that's made the main draw when he was playing. Um, he's no one to sleep on. He's such a great teammate and such a great player. And Matt Hilling, who mixes his time indoor and, and outdoor, uh, just does things where I'm like, you're not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> Yeah, so let's go back to camera two and let's scroll through these 18 brackets. So basically, there are eight, eight available spots for the qualifiers. The other eight spots are were automatic bids from previous tournaments. That's the Denver Open and that was the, um, was it Virginia Beach? No, it was Wapaka. So the top four spots for Wapaka, top four spots for Denver. If you already had draw points, then they... It trickled down to the fifth and sixth and so on and so forth, which explains how Ben, ben Vaught got the last spot. Big up to Ben Vaught. So let's zoom in on these 18 brackets. So if I'm going to pick bracket one, 18 bracket one, I'm going to go Marek and Prima. They have superpowers in the sister beaches, which is Hermosa Beach and um, Manhattan Beach. Uh, I think they do really well in those tournaments. I thought the, the Norseka qualifier, I think they got the second spot. I love Prima did. And I believe the Hermosa Beach Open and Memorial Day weekend, they 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 won the whole thing, and they they just do really good uh, on this particular sand where they train and come from back to camera too. So Ty Coots, Martinez, to favorite from Denver, favorite from California. That's going to be fun. Frank Field, love you, but I'm I don't think you're going to make it back. Prove me wrong. Now let's go to bracket two. My bracket two, I'm going Jeff Samuels and Kopke. Kopke, when I, I met him, I thought the skill set was a little bit of a hot mess. But uh, when he needs to play, he can play. And when it's 20 up and that guy's at the service line and it's 20 up and he's blocking, I, I trust him almost more than anyone in this field right now. So Jeff's actually got a winner. I see him. I see a true nine versus eight. Amato, that, that is a blocking machine. I, I called him Captain Caveman when I met that guy. Let's go back to the brackets. Yeah, I, I, call, I nicknamed him Captain Caveman because that dude blocks with a level of aggression that is just off the page. So let's go. And scrolling. Marcus Partain, where are you at? The Schiffer. All right, so going to bracket number three, you got... Tyler Penberthy and Peterson. Uh, where's the... F oh, so there are true five going against possibly Bradford and Dew. And Zepper Dew has been in a, a, um, kind of an amazing run for someone that's so young and just coming up. Um, Anderson and Lorenz saw them practice yesterday. That's that's That might go to three. And yeah, I see a true five versus 12 on this, and I see Penn Berthy and Peterson pulling it out. Ooh, look at that. Long and Stevenson, where are you at? Let's go. All right, so now let's go to bracket number four. Freshman has been playing lights out defense. I, I remember him in the quarterfinals, making it to the quarterfinals in Denver, and also quarterfinals in the Pottstown Rumble with Jeff Samuels is now picked up um, Thomas Hurst, the guy with the lucky hat. So that's going to be a fun match. Dylan Cox has been the better version of himself the in, the entire season, and I expect that I expect him to win that his first his second round match, and I expect that to go to three. Sauter, Yang, Yang has got superpowers away from Denver, so don't sleep on him. But Ian Carlson and Skylar Del Swole. Just got, let me do the stuff. He got muscles. Skylar Del Swole, baby. Um, yeah, I like him making that finals in the true, uh, true 13 versus four. And I think I will go Frischman and Hurst. I think Hurst makes the Manhattan Beach open, uh, the draw. Let's go to bracket number five. Wyatt Harrison playing with the other hitman for hire, Ryan Miller. Uh, sorry, I'll scroll through these a little bit faster. Wow, you got Coach Pinheiro playing. Ella. Leandro Pinheiro is playing. That's 
Yeah, unique. Yeah, I, I like um, Harrison and Miller. I'll go with that. I'll go with the three seed. Let's go to bracket number six. Budinger and Prodrowski. Miller and Roberts. That's interesting. Wow. Sorry, I got the wrong Miller. Adam Roberts. And let's, which Miller are we talking about here, guys? Nathaniel Miller. Yo, let's go back to my camera. Nathaniel Miller is not a dude. You're a dude. That is a man. A handsome, muscular man. <laughs> Him and Roberts, I think, yeah, yeah, I think they, they're considering their bracket. I like them getting out too. Let's go to bracket seven. Jerko has been playing fantastic ball, and he and Satterfield. Um, I like that team, and I hope they continue to play together. And Berkey and Joyner. Hmm, that's an interesting team. I go Jerko. I think I go Jerko and Satterfield to make the draw on that one. Let's go to bracket eight. Ian Bicko out here training a little bit early. Look at that, Hanneman and Mesco. Well, look at that. That's Travis Hanneman. That's Chris's kid. And John Mesco needs no introduction. Jordan Hop. And the team I, I, I pick getting out of this. Are you ready? This team right here. The number 63 seed. Hilling and Magutatia. I think have a great shot at making the main draw, though. I, I, I acknowledge Hop. And where's are the... Um, Heavy favorites to get out of there. So for the women's bracket, so for the winner's bracket, let's, women's bracket, my dark horse pick to make it is Jen Ketty and Tori Paranagua. And I'll go back to the camera and we'll go through those 18 brackets and we'll go through them a little faster because I still want to talk about Olympics. So... Yeah, I go number one seed, Lorraine and Robinson. I go Wow, Victoria Dennis is playing with Pragoska. That's an interesting team. This one I go Beagle Meyer and Denny. Ali Denny is a savage. I go the eight over the nine. Spieler and Tori Van Winden. That other Tori. Let's go. They're number five. And I love Paranich. Paranich played for um, Cal Poly, played for Todd Rogers, and I'll be at the qualifier for a minute, hoping I can catch that match. She's always smiling, and she's she's a heavy competitor, but I go Spieler and Van Winden. I like the name Cool for her reasons, obvious. Ella Gray. There is an endless summer product playing, I believe, I believe Madison Shields. That's going to be airtight, airtight. I'm going cool and Ottinger. Sorry, Gray. I ain't trying to sell you out. Still got love. Anderson and Kina. This is the one I go, the 19th seed. Ketty and Paranag Par uh, Paranagua. Let's go to the next bracket. Heel and Dahl and Tan, huh? That's a team. I love me some putt. And I think, yep, I think putt is going to have to actually get some, it's going to have to be on par if she's going to get out of this pool. Parish and Rhodes for the last bracket. No, it's, it's next to the last bracket. Making Gebhardt has been playing really good ball. I'll go with the seventh seed on that, Parish and Rhodes, and I believe the last one, Brooke Sweat. Welcome back to Manhattan Beach. Let's break a sweat. Though I do, my, my other dark horse is Piles and Slabakova. They, she's been playing terrific volleyball. And on the grass, indoor, um, volleyball, planet Mars, you name it, she's been playing it. I don't know if I picked a winner for the Manhattan Beach Open, but if I didn't, I, I'm, I'll go. Um, I'm rooting for uh, Taryn and Kristen, but I'm picking Hughes and Chang. Um, this is this is 
they have like extra superpowers playing in the sister beaches, Huntington Beach. And um, yeah, it's been fun. So let's go to subject number two, the Olympics, the Olympic review. Now this one, I am going to start a 60 second countdown clock. And I'm going to talk about three things. I do everything in things of three. All right, here we go. Let's start my clock. So here are three things I liked about volleyball and the Olympics. I'm going to have separate titles for everything else. First thing, be Italian. Watching the indoor Italian women's volleyball team just absolutely boss it through the entire tournament. Only lost one set to Dominican Republic and has won every single set since and won convincingly. They are the style of when athleticism meets proper technique. The game is more beautiful when you do it right and they did it right and they won convincingly. Congratulations to them. My number two thing I liked about it were the Swedes were sweet. They had a little bit of a bump in the road against Qatar, but there's something to be said about beating Cuba, who was playing their best volleyball at the right time, beating the, the um, Qatar in the rematch and route to the semifinals and absolutely routing and dominating Germany in the finals. Now, the third thing is I might need extra time for this was the final, the gold medal match between the Canadians and the Brazilians. There was a little bit of chatting at the net. There goes my honking horn. And that honking horn's not saying move out of the way. That honking horn was saying there was beef between Wilkerson and, and and Anna Patricia and the DJ actually playing the song Imagine by John Lennon was absolutely epic. It was monumental. And the commentators really, it was uh, the best, one of the better commentators, you know, kind of the A-team. They, maybe saying nothing at that moment would have been golden. You know, in fact, I think Wong, Wong was singing the wrong song, but... Just watching that and then watching him play that song and just everybody keeping the mood light, watching the crowd sing, big zoom in on, uh, on Brandy's face smiling, big zoom in on Duda's face. And of course, the only one that wasn't smiling <laughs> was Anna Patricia, like she don't want to be friends, you know. And from an athletic perspective, I think there's something to be said about being locked in where if you watch that gold medal match again, when they won, I don't think Anna Patricia, it's said in her head until like 60 seconds or a minute and a half, like, you know, she shook hands and she did her thing. And when Duda started shaking her, she kind of like was, had this look like, wait, did, did that just happen? And then when it set in, then the emotions, uh, I guess the right emotions everyone's talking about, that's what came in later. So, so congratulations to the, the Brazilians. Those were my three magic moments. Great job, Mr. DJ. Great job to the Italians. Congrats on the Americans making the silver. At the end of the day, the better team won, but but the Karch dynasty of, of good coaching, selecting the right players, and having this winner's mentality to go with all of this training and talent was, was if he doesn't, I hope I hope he stays. He's one of the Olympic coaches. I hope that, st that coaches till he dies. Um, but congrats to our women's team and congrats to the men's team. I, mean, I know lead doesn't shine, but um, not one person that I know picked the men's team to medal. Anyone, anyone that said that they thought the men's team was going to medal is lying their behinds off. This it's one of three things: they are liars, <laughs> um, Mrs. Anderson, <laughs> Matt Anderson's wife. <laughs> Or like a six-year-old who got control of the mouse that just started clicking on every bet and, and whatever. So so big up to the bronze, big up to the silver, and shining in the gold of the Italians. Now, here are my three sad moments in the Olympics. There weren't very many sad, and when I use the word sad, I don't... Um, it doesn't... Not heavy sadness, except for my number one thing. So let's start from three to one, and here we go. Number three... The Norwegian bump in the road. If you watch Norway from pool play all the way to the semifinals, they were on something I, I affectionately referred to as cruise control. 
they were beating teams easily. And even when it was close, we knew it wasn't close until the semifinals. Kirsten Sorum looked off and the Germans took advantage of that. And in the bronze medal match, they picked it where they left off. But in your road to, to repeat and defend your championship, there can... You can't have those bumps in the playoffs. Number two, Mike Playcheck getting bounced by Miles Partain and Andy Benesh. And though I don't know a whole lot about it, I don't know. I don't care. You don't do your own like that. And now you're back in the United States. Y'all got some explaining to do, period. Number one, watching Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss lose in the first round or round of 16 or whatever it was against the Canadians. I am biased. Um, when it comes to them, I'm objective and I'll do the best I can, but I'm talking about moments of sadness and I'm still sad. My wife looked, said I look like my dog died. It was, it was like, you could not talk to me. You could not see me. And I know their future's bright and I know they'll probably be back at another one, but there's something to be said about being this elite athlete and there's something to be said about how you treat people and when you master the two of those and put them together there are the most beloved team in the united states of america and when because there are teams i'm telling i'm gonna tell you straight up there are teams in the american scene that when they lost you know we're america first people uh, um and we were sad but ain't, we ain't shed no tears for those some of those people that lost we, there, were, there were tears when Clo Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss lost, there were tears, and and I will I will admit I'm not completely objective on this, but two things can be true at the same time. I could be biased and at the same time factual, so that was my sad moment. And now let's go to the the other Olympics. Let's go to. The three things I liked about the Olympics outside of volleyball that we can just share collectively. Let's go number three, Snooptopia. The S N double O P D O double G was everywhere. He was at the volleyball courts. He was at the basketball courts. He was wearing t-shirts. He was singing the dude. I saw him equestrian saw him riding on a horse. And some people might have thought it was an overdose, but this man brings a utopia to the Olympics that everybody can just warm up to. The man warms your heart. Snooptopia, big win. Number two, I will go Djokovic. Tennis is uh, the Grand Slams are more viewed at those Grand Slams because they're a singular audience or whatever. But watching him win the gold and just watch him address the emotion, this emotional speech and how much he loves the sport and how much he appreciates everybody was golden. And number one, Steph Curry putting people to bed putting people to sleep. He got double team. He got triple team. There were open jump shooters because everyone knew who the ball was going to go to. And there's something to be said when you're deciding who the MVP is. The ball's in that person's hand. Everyone knows it's going to be in that person's hands. And he, get, and he, and he gets the kill or, or the shot anyway. That's MVP type stuff. And though LeBron James got the MVP, there's a strong argument that could be made for the um, Steph playing the role of finisher. Um, but congratulations to the men's indoor team. Shame. 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 Now let's go to the three things I didn't like I, I, under the category of not so much. One, break, uh, three, break, the breakdancing competition. That was, an, that was an embarrassment. That was an abomination. And I don't know how they do their Olympic selection process for breakdancing, but anyone that's ever been in New York City knows damn well that we have better breakdancers on a subway train looking for donations than, the, than that asinine thing they call breakdancing at the Olympics. That's a conspiracy. They select the worst people possible because they want to get rid of it, and they made it look bad. They made real breakdancers look bad. Number two, there's way too much made about the opening ceremony, okay? For all of you people calling everyone snowflakes, if you see something you don't like, don't watch it. Turn it off. Don't watch. Don't sit through every disgusting frame and be disgusted with yourself. And also arm yourself with the information before you spit facts on social media. Number one, uh, this is not a very popular thing, but this is very important. And I'll wait for the horn to go off. Russia not being in this Olympics was... was um, 
athletic robbery. They robbed the world of some of the most elite athletes to compete. Whatever your politics have, are going on, on the other side of the world, there's someone driving a bus. There's someone teaching kids mathematics. There's someone who's a nurse practitioner. And their level of politics and investment and, and leadership or what's going on is zero. And the same can be said about the elite athletes. We, we are not soldiers. We are athletes. We're athletes. We compete. And they deserve to compete. Um, and that's, I guess that's really all I have to say about that. But the Olympics are nostalgic. For all of you that locked yourselves in your room, you know, and have like multiple monitors like yours truly, for all of you that ingratiated yourself into your favorite sport and just stayed locked in on that because volleyball, that was volleyball every day to the end. Man. We, we, we can go all day and watch the same match a second time and still, and it was still feel new, right? And for all of you guys who only get to watch certain sports once every four years and just look forward to it, like the 100 meter dash, the, the relay, uh, uh, the relays were awesome. The swim competition was great. I'm a big wrestling head. So watching, you know, freestyle wrestling uh, be back on the map, I believe the USA won a silver. So for everybody that's in it for like all of the sports, it is, it is the, in, the, the Olympics are the ambassador for hope, peace togetherness, humanity, and it is supposed to be the great escapism. So for anyone saying you're distracted by the Olympics, you're supposed to be distracted by the Olympics. The Olympics is supposed to serve as a distraction. The Olympics is supposed to serve as an escapism, and it's supposed to serve everything I just said a few minutes ago. On the other side of the world, there's you. I'll say that again. On the other side of the world, there's Jason, there's Jason. There's another Jason. There's another Theo. There's another Taylor Crab. Well, maybe not another Taylor Crab, but but on the other side of the world, there are people just like us. And we're getting together, and we're competing, and it's fellowship, and it, and it gives everybody hope. And that is why I like the Olympics, and I'm optimistic, if not hopeful. That's why I think a lot of pe other people like the Olympics as well. Um, that's all I got, little 20-something minute segment, but for all of you at home, for all of you on your iPads, for all of you on your iPhones, for all of you on your desktop, who runs the world? Old school, baby. Old school. I'm Jason DeBillius. For the people at Man the Manhattan Beach Open, I'll be there Thursday for the qualifier. I'm in London for the rest. Good luck, and I love all of y'all. Or should I say, all of yous. I'm out. Come check out the Option Podcast on OptionDB.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're going to love what you hear.